Ugh. Hey guys, so I just finished reviewing the Oppo Find X2 Pro, and it's the only phone to feature Sony's new IMX sensor. It's this update from last year's 48 megapixel sensor that pretty much everyone was using, and it's producing really, really nice images. But that got me thinking, the Galaxy S20 Ultra has a 108 megapixel sensor. So I kind of just wanted to compare these two phones' image quality because these two phones are using some of the biggest sensors on the market right now. They're also the only two phones to use these individual sensors at all, and we're probably going to see a lot more phones using at least this new Sony IMX pretty soon here. But for right now, the Oppo Find X2 Pro is the only phone to use it. So I kind of just went around my apartment and took photos of things that I thought would really highlight the color and contrast and basic image quality you're gonna get out of these phones. So stick with me, I'm just gonna go through some images here. So the first photo we're gonna look at is the photo of this plant. And pretty much right away, you can see the Oppo Find X2 Pro does a lot better with white balance. There's a lot of blues in the shadows and highlights in the Galaxy S20 Ultra image. However, it does do saturation and color a little bit better than the Find X2 Pro. Now, this is all kind of subjective. It really depends what you like. The green of the plant pops a lot more, the pot that the plant's in pops a lot more, but the Oppo Find X2 Pro is definitely more true to life. Also, the Galaxy S20 Ultra likes to put color in the highlights and shadows, so you can see the table has some blue on it, kind of a cast probably from outside and from that potted plant. But in reality, the Oppo Find X2 Pro is much more true to life here. Next, we'll go through this photo of me. And as you can see, again, the Oppo Find X2 Pro does much better with white balance, and it also does better with lighting in general. The Galaxy S20 Ultra is trying really, really hard to preserve those highlights and add a little bit more contrast. And that kind of results in an image that's a little bit dark, and I think is just a little overly dark for me. Now, there's definitely more contrast in the Galaxy S20 Ultra's image, and if you like that, then that can be a benefit. But personally, I prefer the image out of the Oppo Find X2 Pro. Now I wanted to test the low light performance of these phones because both the phones have really big camera sensors, right? The Oppo Find X2 Pro made images pretty soft and it's pretty apparent here that the Nona binning in the Galaxy S20 Ultra is doing a really good job here. Obviously, if you look at the text on the boxes of film, it's a lot sharper on the Galaxy S20 Ultra where it's pretty soft on the Find X2 Pro, but overall, I definitely have to give it to the Galaxy S20 Ultra. And just for solidarity, I figured I'd try the night mode on both these phones as well. For some reason, the Oppo Find X2 Pro really messed up the white balance here, whereas the Galaxy S20 Ultra fixed it. Now this is kind of weird because in auto mode, the Find X2 Pro does better in white balance, but in night mode, not so much. Next, we can move on to this photo of a landscape. And again, you really see that the Oppo Find X2 Pro in auto mode does white balance way better than the Galaxy S20 Ultra. If you just look at the clouds in particular, the X2 Pro has really nice natural white clouds, whereas the Galaxy S20 Ultra makes them really weirdly blue. Now, if you want something more dramatic, the Galaxy S20 Ultra kind of wins that out, but the Find X2 Pro has much more true to life colors. Now, if you look at the photo of this can, I wanted to take this photo to kind of show off the bokeh and depth of field differences between the two phones. But really, I think this image shows a difference in highlight preservation. If you look at the Galaxy S20 Ultra and the light behind the can, you can see that it tried really hard to preserve those highlights, whereas the Find X2 Pro kind of left them blown out. And if you look at the window, there's more highlights preserved in the Galaxy S20 Ultra as well. Now, this is probably because it has a higher shutter speed. If you look at the shadow of my hand, the Find X2 Pro definitely did a better job in preserving that detail, whereas there's a little more contrast in the Galaxy S20 Ultra. Now, if you want a more contrasty image that preserves those highlights, the Galaxy S20 Ultra does win here. But again, if you want something that's more true to life and kind of brings out those shadows, the Find X2 Pro is the winner. Now this photo, I think, really shows off the color differences between the two images. The Find X2 Pro kind of turns the wood this different, lighter wood color, whereas the Galaxy S20 Ultra is a little more accurate, if not a little more contrasty. Also, the blue in the candle is definitely more saturated, but the Find X2 Pro tried really hard to make the whites on the wall more white. And that is more accurate, but both of the cameras didn't really do a good job in showing the exact look of the image. I'd still say that the Galaxy S20 Ultra kind of won out here, although it is a little bit darker. Finally, I wanted to show just how razor thin the depth of field is on both of these phones. The focal plane is so shallow that you're going to get out of focus images pretty easily. 
On the Galaxy S20 Ultra, you can see especially the Sony logo is pretty out of focus, whereas on the Find X2 Pro, it's still a little bit out of focus, but it's definitely a little bit sharper. And that's because the focal plane is a little bit wider on the Find X2 Pro because the sensor is not quite as big. On the Galaxy S20 Ultra, it's sometimes hard to get an image in focus, not just because the autofocus is bad on that phone, but because it's got such a razor thin field of focus. So I think overall, the Find X2 Pro is kind of a happy medium between the two. So which phone do you guys think took the better images? Obviously, both of them are very camera-oriented phones and they have some of the highest rated cameras on the market right now, but they're also $1,400, so that's what you get for that money. Anyways, let me know in the comment section down below and make sure you stay tuned to AndroidAuthority.com and the YouTube channel, and I'll catch you in the next video.